The following presentation is brought to you by the Prevail Organization. Every one of us has the right to pursue the life we choose to live. All About Assistive Technology, Part 1, presented by Gabriel Ligo. In this section, we will discuss exactly what is assistive technology, the laws behind assistive technology, or AT, the process used to obtain and use assistive technology, and examples of AT for activities of daily living. Assistive technology can mean many things. The following definitions come straight out of the Technology-Related Assistance to Individuals with Disabilities Act, or Tech Act, of 1988. AT devices are any item, piece of equipment, or product system, whether acquired commercially off the shelf, modified, or customized, that is used to increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities of individuals with disabilities. AT services are any service that directly assists an individual with a disability in the selection, acquisition, or use of an assistive technology device. These are all solutions that allow barriers to be removed from the life of a person with a disability. The ideal process for obtaining assistive technology is as follows. Determine what the goals are of the user. Figure out what their current strengths and skills are. Then offer one or more solutions to bridge the gap between the skills they have and where they need to get to. Provide training on the equipment or solution to both the client and possibly caregivers, family. And then a few weeks later, provide follow-up to see how well the solution has been implemented and working for the client. Another piece of legislation was passed that defines assistive technology within the context of the education system. This legislation is called IDEA, Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. In 2014, the Department of Justice came out with an explanation of roles and responsibilities of school districts in terms of communication and access to education. Generally, students with disabilities must have the opportunity to fully participate in public schools. Public schools are required to comply with these laws. The links provided here lead to more information on the rights of students with a disability and the responsibilities of schools as it applies to access to education and communication within that setting. Assistive technology services in the school setting. The term assistive technology service means any service that directly assists a child with a disability in the selection, acquisition, or use of an assistive technology device. Such terms include the evaluation of the needs of such child, including a functional evaluation of the child in the child's customary environment, purchasing leasing, or otherwise providing for the acquisition of assistive technology devices by such child, selecting, designing, fitting, customizing, 
adapting, applying, maintaining, repairing, or replacing assistive technology devices, coordinating and using other therapies, interventions, or services with assistive technology devices, such as those associated with existing education and rehabilitation plans and programs training or technical assistance for such child, or, where appropriate, the family of such child, and training or technical assistance for professionals, including individuals providing education and rehabilitation services, employers, or other individuals who provide services to employ or otherwise substantially involved in the major life functions of such child. Assistive technology categories and considerations. The type of impairments addressed are important. They can include motor, which is movement, vision, hearing, tactile, which means the sense of touch, cognitive, which means the person's ability to think and reason, dementia, and other types of memory loss, psychological challenges, and others. The type of activities being addressed can include school, play, basic activities of daily living, such as hygiene and eating, employment, mobility, communication, money management, and others. Low-tech versus high-tech solutions. Generally speaking, Low tech can be explained in five minutes or less and sent home with the person with a reasonable expectation that the device will be used correctly. Whereas high tech requires further training and setup assistance. Social issues can include experience, language, culture, money, education, gender, and the chronological generation the person is a part of. We are always working from the assumption that it can be done. Areas of consideration for improved access include aids for visual impairments, aids for auditory impairments, physical interfacing, such as mice and keyboards for the computer, non-physical interfacing, such as speech recognition and eye gaze technology, language and communication supports, positioning and availability, such as mounting equipment, and how attainable the solution is realistically for the individual. What can be adapted? Almost anything. A couple of examples are this paralyzed man on the left with cerebral palsy having the opportunity to go skydiving with little support. And at the other end of the spectrum, the woman seen here on the right is scuba diving independently in her adapted wheelchair. Again, always working from the assumption that it can be done. One category of assistive technology adaptation is the area of ADL, or 
activities of daily living. These are fundamental skills that are required to care for oneself, such as eating, bathing, and mobility. Basic ADL include ambulating, the extent of an individual's ability to move from one position to another and walk independently. Feeding, the ability of a person to feed oneself. Dressing, the ability to select appropriate clothes and to put the clothes on. Personal hygiene, the ability to bathe and groom oneself and to maintain dental hygiene, nail and hair care. Continence, the ability to control the bladder and bowel functions. And toileting, the ability to get to and from the toilet, using it appropriately and cleaning oneself. IADL, Instrumental Activities of Daily Living. The instrumental ADL are those that require more complex thinking skills, including organizational skills. IADL includes transportation and shopping, the ability to procure groceries, attend events, managing transportation, either via driving or by organizing other means of transportation, managing finances. This includes the ability to pay bills and manage financial assets, shopping and meal preparation, everything required to get a meal on the table it also covers shopping for clothing and other items required for daily life. House cleaning and home maintenance, cleaning kitchens after eating, maintaining living areas reasonably clean and tidy, and keeping up with home maintenance. Managing communication with others the ability to manage telephone and mail, as well as more modern electronic communication systems. Managing medications, the ability to both obtain medications and taking them as directed. Some examples of assistive technology include eyeglasses, hearing aids, and ergonomic keyboards, canes, prosthetics, and wheelchairs, aiding in mobility, ramps, widened doorways, and lowered counters all make the home environment more accessible, speech recognition for an alternative method to computer access, Word prediction, as seen on smartphones today. Switches and mounting for people with more physical types of disabilities, preventing them from accessing. Augmentative communication. Services such as speech operators and ordering groceries online and specialized keyboards and mice to aid in accessing a computer system. There are a wide variety of options available depending on the needs, as seen here. And now we'll look at a wide variety of adaptations for activities of daily living. Here we see a young boy using an adapted keyboard to access the computer with large labels, and the key layout has been somewhat adapted and color-coded for him. This is my friend John. He's got a few things going on here. He has a basic communication board on the surface of his lap tray, 
and he also has a higher tech communication device mounted on the front edge of the lap tray. John's got an automatic door opener positioned at the front corner of the tray, and on the other side, just out of sight, is an adapted golf club that he uses to access the elevator buttons when he's at work. Another client of mine is seen here accessing an adapted telephone system with his communication device. Here we see a young man doing some adapted meal preparation. The stovetop area has been lowered so that he can reach it. He also has a mirror angled so that he can see down into the pans he is cooking with. In the bottom picture, we can see a man using a universal cuff, allowing him to hold his spoon despite the fact that he does not have a sufficient grasp. In these images, we see people doing some outdoor recreation with adapted equipment. The skier has both some adapted poles and a ski with a seating mount to accommodate for his missing legs. And the gentleman on the bottom right has a sip and puff switch leading up to his mouth that allows him to activate his pistol. This is my friend Todd. He's using a more high-tech solution, an automatic feeding system that allows him to eat independently with a fair amount of setup. These are some basic commonly used dressing aids. We have a reacher at the top that can be used for grasping and reaching many things, including pulling your pants up, or just grabbing your clothing items from the closet. Next, we have a long handle sponge to make it easier to reach all parts of your body when bathing. The item with the red handle is a long handle shoehorn to assist with getting your shoes on. This next item is called a sock aid, and you slip the sock over the outside, and it's to help you to slip your socks on easier. And the last item is a dressing stick. That allows you to hook onto your clothing parts and pull them where you need to get them to be able to dress yourself more independently. Here's another look at some dressing aids. In the picture on the top, you can see the sock aid as it is being used. On the left is a button hook for assisting with threading buttons through the buttonhole with one hand. And on the right is another long handle shoehorn. This one has a better handle. Here are some aids for cooking. On the left is a support to hold the pan handle in place while stirring. The middle image shows an adapted cutting board with some vertical guides to help keep the food in place, as well as some pin type holders to manage the food so you can cut it with just one hand. The item on the right is called a rocker knife. It also assists to cut food more effectively with one hand. Here we see several adapted feeding aids. There are many different types of adapted silverware that have been modified with long handles, built up handles made out of different materials, and some with different weights. There is another example of one with the universal cuff, so it can be held without having a functional grasp. There are even models that help to accommodate for tremors in the hands, as seen in the picture on the right. Here we can see 
a couple styles of adapted feeding bowls and plates that have built up edges or lips so that you can push the spoon or fork up against the side and get the food onto the silverware more easily. These items will typically also have a non-slip coating on the bottom to keep the bowl or plate in place. Here are some aids for drinking. On the left is a cup holder mounted on a gooseneck style arm that is clamped to the bed rail and bringing the beverage to within reach of the person's mouth with a straw. On the right side is a product that is not specifically made for people with disabilities. There is a bag inside the backpack and it is filled with the user's beverage of choice. A straw goes from the bag around the front to the user's mouth. Here are a couple more models of cup holders that can be employed. The one on the right is particularly versatile for mounting and keeps the beverage level at all times. Here's a closer look at a height adjustable cooking surface. This is particularly useful when people both with and without disabilities are sharing the same living area. Or perhaps they have different types of disabilities and thus need the stovetop at different heights. In these pictures, we see several aids for the bathroom allowing one to take safe showers or baths. We have both vertical and horizontal grab bars here that can be used. Simply having a shower head that is on a removable handheld line is very useful so that you can move the water spray instead of having to move your whole body. In the picture on the left, you can see a roll-in sh shower, so you can roll what's called a shower chair into the space, and the person in the chair can take a shower. On the right, similar to the stovetop in the kitchen, the bathroom sink is height adjustable, with room underneath for a person in a wheelchair to slide underneath it. Here are a few more bathroom adaptations. In the image on the left, there is ample room underneath the bathroom sinks to pull up to them in a wheelchair. There is also a shower bench in the bathtub so that the person can be seated while taking a shower. And on the right side is what you call a walk-in bathtub. The user steps into it and sits down. Then the side is firmly closed and you fill up the chamber with water for a seated bath experience. Here we see a standard ramp for getting in and out of a residence when in a wheelchair. This is an automatic door opener that allows a door to be opened by activating some type of a switch or motion sensor. Uh, this is a simple elevator that can be added to a residence to get to different levels in the home or business. Uh, this is a great adaptation of a crib uh, that allows this mother to get in close and uh, manage the needs of her baby uh, just as any other mother would need to do. Here we see some options for managing medications. There is everything from a simple managing set at the top that has the days of the week and the times broken out so that the medications can be pre-sorted ahead of time 
to a more complex system on the left with timers that can be set. Then the dosages are automatically released or an alarm will go off informing the person that it is time to take their pills. These items on the bottom right allow you to split pills easier when it is necessary to adjust for the right dosage of medications. These are some simple examples of handheld urinals that provide more independence with toileting needs when going out into the community. Here we have some items that make it easier to do some activities around the home. On the left, we have a simple rolling platform with a laundry basket placed on it. This can make it easier and safer to move laundry or other items from one room to another. In the middle are some adapted tools to accommodate for impaired strength or grasp and still enjoy your gardening hobby. And on the right is an adapted sewing needle that makes it much easier to thread it if you have some vision impairment. On the left, the woman has a nice lap tray with a soft bean bag on the bottom that helps to keep it level and secure. So now she has a useful surface to place her beverage, magazine, or some other hobby she might want to work on. In the middle, is a Jumbo Universal Remote Control with large buttons that are helpful if you have problems with your vision or if it is difficult for you to hit smaller targets due to poor control of your hands and fingers. On the right side is a standard over the bed table called that because its base is designed to be able to slide underneath a bed. The table surface would then be available to you while in bed, serving a variety of functions. Here on the left side, we see a mount on a wheelchair for holding a fishing rod. And a playing card holder on the right side to assist with impaired hand function. The cards themselves are also adapted with large symbols. These are some nice clothing related adaptations. You can see on the left a common adaptation found in nursing homes with non-slip material incorporated into a pair of socks. There are also several examples of decorative jewelry worked into the design of the hearing aids and cochlear implants. Simple and functional decoration is added to the crutches, including a small pouch. There are also fidget jewelry, a designer insulin pump belt, and other clothes designed to be easier to get on and off and fit better while sitting in a wheelchair. Solutions to deal with everyday situations when you have an impaired grasp are seen here. These can assist with a variety of situations. There are many different options available for adapted telephone use. These can include picture labels on auto dial buttons, amplified audio coming in as well as going out, adapted smartphones designed to work better for most seniors, and even a speakerphone that can be used with a remote control and a switch.
Here are some examples of adapted writing and typing aids. They help with holding the writing utensil or pointer steady while using it if your grasp is not sufficient to the task. This is a small sample of materials that you might employ to make everyday home situations more accessible. On the top right is some pipe insulation, a kind of rubber foam that can be added to a toothbrush or silverware so that the grip is more usable for some. Zip ties and Velcro seen on the bottom help to keep different parts together when you are adapting how something is accessed. On the top left is simple shelf liner available at many stores. It can be very useful for keeping things like a plate or keyboard in place at the most desired position. This concludes All About Assistive Technology, Part 1. If you've got any questions or would like to contact someone at Open Doors for Multicultural Families, please use the contact information listed here. Thank you.